comes the revision coming along. Let's power up a mercy, OG, and lighten your revision load. If you give me five minutes to ask and answer 10 questions about ectopic pregnancy, what will they be? Well, I have used up 10 seconds of my five minutes already, so without further fuss, here are my 10 questions and answers. Question number one, is progesterone useful in the diagnosis of an ectopic pregnancy? No, it is not. A serum progesterone level is not a good test for an ectopic pregnancy. It is a great test to assess the viability of a pregnancy, but it is not useful in telling us whether the pregnancy is in the uterus or somewhere else. We published a paper on this in the BMJ. I will put a link to that paper below. Question number two, what is the role of beta-HCG? Although a serum beta-HCG level is only modestly useful in the diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy, it is very useful in planning the management of an ectopic pregnancy. It helps with decisions about whether you should recommend expectant, medical or surgical management, and whether the patient is making good progress during the treatment. Now let's deal with expectant, medical and surgical management options. Question number three then, what should you consider or when should you consider expectant management? The answer is if the patient meets three preconditions. First, clinically stable. Second, initial beta-HCG is less than 1,500. And importantly, thirdly, the HCG level is falling. Questions four to eight relate to medical management with methotrexate. Question number four then, what must you be absolutely certain about before using methotrexate? The answer is that you must be absolutely confident that the pregnancy is an ectopic pregnancy and that there is no pregnancy in the uterus. This often means that you cannot give methotrexate at the first visit. Question number five, what are the criteria for methotrexate treatment? There are eight, let me list these. No significant pain, hemodynamically stable, low serum beta-HCG, ideally less than 1,500, but at least less than 5,000. Number four, no fetal heart activity on the ultrasound scan. Number five, ectopic mass less than 35 millimeters. Number six, there is no intrauterine pregnancy. Number seven, patient is willing to attend for follow-up. And finally, number eight, no sensitivity or allergy to methotrexate. If these criteria are not met, then surgery should be considered. Question number six, how do you monitor or follow up patients having methotrexate treatment? The answer is that you measure serum beta-HCG on days four and seven after methotrexate. If the beta-HCG level falls by more than 15% from day four to day seven, all is good. Continue with beta-HCG weekly until it is below 15 international units per litre. If the HCG does not fall between days four and seven post methotrexate, patient will need further assessment by a senior clinician. Question number seven, what should patients avoid during methotrexate treatment? Two things, alcohol and folate containing vitamins. Question number eight, what should you tell women about methotrexate treatment's effect on ovarian reserve? You can give them the good news that there is no effect. Question number nine, how long should a woman wait before trying for a pregnancy after methotrexate treatment? The answer is three months. Question number 10, and the final question, should you use salpingectomy or salpingotomy for treatment of ectopic pregnancy? In the presence of a healthy contralateral tube, salpingectomy is preferred. However, you should recommend salpingotomy if you suspect the contralateral tube is not normal. I will put a link to ESEP study which gives more information on this. Great, I hope you found this video useful. Come back for more soon. Cheerio!